let me ask you, what's the series? Just the series that we're going through on Wednesday nights? Fruits, yeah, and then fruit of the, the hands. Yes, sir, fruit of the hands. Um, so I asked you all to do a little bit of studying. Did anyone find a verse um, that dealt with that or a thought along those lines? <laughs> Okay, Sarah Grace, what do you got? That's in Proverbs, isn't it? Proverbs, okay. Proverbs what? Thirty? Thirty-one sixteen, alright. Okay. We're actually, yeah, we'll talk about that towards the end, but that's a good one. Um, Proverbs 31, 16, this is known as the what? Yeah, the virtuous woman proverb or the, uh, what's about the ruby? Um, I had my daughters memorize this when they were younger. But anyway, Proverbs 31, 16 says, She considers a field and buyeth it with the fruit of her hands. She planted the vineyard. And we will, good verse, talk about that uh, towards the end here tonight. Any other verses? Anyone else find another one? Anyone else remember? That's all right. We'll get in that habit. I'll tell you. 31, 31. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Another great verse. Anyone else have a verse? You might look up um, in, the, in, the, in the back somewhere, uh, work or hands. That's a, that's a good way to kind of maybe sometimes find these things. Um, I'll just, I'll give you a heads up. Next week's very, very similar to this, but uh, we're going to look at it differently, is the, the work, I'm sorry, the fruit, of their, the fruit of your doings. The fruit of your doings. And you'll find a specific verse about the fruit of your doings if you'll, if you'll search through your concordance or if you have a, uh, a lot of times you, on your phone, if you have a smartphone or an iPad or a computer, you can go into that program and just type in the word doings, let's say. And you might give you 30 or 40, I don't know how many words they'll give you, but it's in one way. Uh, if you'll type in fruit, comma, doings, then you might find the verse. But, so let's, uh, let's go back to, let's go to Psalms. We're all going to be in Proverbs here a little bit tonight, but look at Psalms 128. Psalm 128. And we better hurry. I've only got about 15 minutes before Levi starts turning the lights out on me, I'm sure. Psalm 128. Um, in verse 1, it says, uh, Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. Verse 2 says, Thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands, happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. That word labor there, yagaya, uh, is what it is in the, uh, the Hebrew, and I'm not, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but that's how it looks anyway, is a, is a um, produce or production um, that, that ye, that's yielded from the result of work. So you'll call that the fruit of your hands. It's the yield of, of, of work. It's the fruit of your work. Um, it's, uh, we, we're talking about the fruit of our hands. Proverbs 21:14 says, "A man shall be satisfied with the good." I'm sorry, a man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. And it says this, "And the recompense and the recompense of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him." And that word recompense. Anyone take a stab at that? What that means? Recompense. Payment. Okay, close. Sure. Paid. Okay. Anyone else? It's, a, it's kind of long. It is kind of a payment, a reward, though. It's a reward. The recompense is a reward. So, so and I'm not correcting, no doubt, the King James. It's, it's perfect. Amen. It's what God preserved for us. But a man shall be satisfied uh, with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense or the reward of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. So here's the question tonight. I'll try and get through here in the next 12 or 13 minutes. Do we have some physical results from our labors for the Lord? Is there something that, that we are physically producing? Now, I'm not talking about trying to earn our way into salvation through good works. But the Bible says we are created in the good works. Amen? That's something we're supposed to be doing. There ought to be something physically coming out of the work that we're doing. If it's all just spiritual, um, in other words, you can say, oh, I'm in the spirit world. Well, even that, there ought to be you know, so, someone growing in the Lord. That's a physical work. Someone getting saved, maybe. Um, that's a, that, can be, that can be physical because um, it's a person that's doing these things. It's, it's some work that's coming out of what we're doing for the Lord. Um, like examples, it might, be, it might be building something. 
Can you give me some example of a place in the, in the Bible where you know some men of God built something for the Lord, not for their own glorification, but they built something for God's glory? Can you give me an example of that? The temple, Solomon's temple, amen, yep. And then also, um, uh, uh, Nehemiah, not Nehemiah, he built the wall. Um, Ezra also um, rebuilt the temple. And then later on, you'll see it on, in, by a wicked man, actually, but he re- did a really good job, uh, was uh, uh, King Herod um, also uh, rebuilt the temple and, uh, and put it back to the first time they got built, I guess, very, very glorious. But anyway, so in some other thoughts, some other... Uh, uh, um, some other examples in the Bible of someone building something for God's glory or for God's purpose. Noah built the ark. Amen. Yes, sir. And then Noah also built an altar <laughs> after he built the ark. Uh, two wonderful examples. Anyone else? Say that again now. Okay. And, uh, yeah, and, and I know they also built the um, altar after they crossed the stream there. They put the, the, uh, the 12 stones in. And they uh, walked across, um, camera, uh, that's in the promised land, though. Uh, they crossed the Jordan, that's what it was. Um, and let's see, what else have I got here? Um, how about Enoch? The Bible says, And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch, and he built it a city, and called the name of that city after the name of his son Enoch. Um, we talked about Noah and the altar. We talked about Solomon. Um, so, so Enoch builds a city. Noah builds an altar and an ark. Solomon builds a temple that his dad wanted to build. Um, so all their labors were in an effort to do something for the Lord. And it produced a physical result. And that's really what I'm focusing on here. And I know there's lots of places by we can talk about spiritual things. And, but I just for, for the sake of tonight's lesson, we're talking about something physically being built for the Lord. Now, we, we of course, probably won't build a temple. Um, you know, we won't build an, uh, necessarily an altar, for se. Um, but, but we build up the work of the Lord. And, and you can do that. What are some things that you can do that might produce something physical, but it's for God's glory? Give me some examples. Okay, amen. You build a wall like on a mission trip or something like that or a church? Absolutely. That's something you're doing for the Lord's glory. It's not for our own purposes. Uh, Miss Diane, today I was in my office. She did something for the Lord today. She just came in here and was cleaning up the church. That's something that was physically got accomplished. You know, the bathrooms smell better, and we appreciate that, amen? Um, I mean, she's in there cleaning the, man's ba- the men's bathroom. She's not going to be using that. It's not for her glory, amen? But she does that for God's glory, for God's purpose. Something else. What, how, might you might, how might you build up something in a person? Go visit, Go visit absolutely. Share the gospel. Discipling, you can disciple. Teach Sunday school. Those of you who teach uh, classes or have taught classes in the, in the past. We talked about, you know, kind of mission work a little bit. Fellowship. Listen, in, in fellowship, you're building up one another. That's what fellowship is all about. Listen, uh, I, I think we take for granted sometimes this thing called fellowship. I don't maybe we are, are overly, you know, don't overly put enough emphasis on it. But it was fellowship that really helped strengthen the early church. It was through that fellowship of the believers that they strengthened. They, begot, they became bonded uh, together through that fellowship. But, yeah, that's another thing. Um, if you've worked a bus route, that's a, that's, a, that's a work that you can do. It's something physically. You're getting in a, in a physical vehicle, and you're picking up physical people uh, doing that. And listen, or even reaching up a single person is the same thing. Now, what are some reasons, okay, on the other side of this, what are some reasons that we don't do the physical work that you want to do for the Lord? Maybe not a reason for you personally, but reasons you've seen in other people. What is something that might prevent someone from doing physical work? Now I'm talking about they're physically challenged. I'm not talking about that. But I mean, what is the reason someone might not do something for the Lord? Pride, okay. So What? Selfishness? Oh, yeah, they, they want their own time. I don't want to give it to the Lord. What else? Lazy. Lazy, lazy. yeah. That's, that's the first one I had on my, on my list, actually. Um, well, that's the second one I had on my list. But the, I'll, I'll talk about that one right now. Proverbs 21, 25. The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. And I saw this. A, a man asked his wife if she ever had a man asked his wife if she ever had any good dreams about him. She said, Yes. I dream one day you'll take out the trash, you'll mow the lawn, you'll do the dishes. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. Anyway, um, Ecclesiastes ten eighteen says, By much slothfulness the building decayeth, and through idleness of the hands the house droppeth through. Um, an idleness, that's, that's when we do not redeem the time that God has given us for whatever labors he's uh, given us the opportunity to be involved in. 
Um, and the Bible says that's even evil. Um, the Bible says uh, redeeming the time because the days are evil. So not redeeming the time is the opposite of that, obviously. Um, and then and we talked about, um, uh, I talked a little bit about, about laziness, but also there's this, this, it's not laziness, it's really just, just being worn out. You're too tired uh, to do something. Now, if you're too tired to do something, one of the reasons might be because you just have to be. There's times, you know, um, I've got a son-in-law who right now, they're bringing in the crops. I mean, he's working, you know, 18-hour days. You, that's just the time you have to do that right now. But there's sometimes we get too tired. Why? Because we filled up our day with all the garbage, you know, and we haven't given the best time for the Lord. Uh, you know, I've, I've seen teenagers many times, and, they, you know, they're dog-tired on Sunday morning, you know, and you're like, you, t- you ought to be awake now. It's 9, 10 o'clock in the morning, you know, and, well, why? Well, I stayed up all night long playing video games, or we stayed up all night long watching movies. And again, every once in a while, that's not a, that's not a horrible thing to do, but if that's what our, our life is, is doing, the Bible says this, you have a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. Um, you're too tired from, from all the time you're doing other things, and, and your, our busyness robs God of the valuable time that he has given us to serve him with. Um, and that's that busyness in our life. And then uh, another reason sometimes people don't do things is uh, depression, anxiety. Sometimes that's overwhelming, uh, and people just don't want to get out of bed. Um, and it's, it's, sometimes it's the root cause of extra sleep or, or idleness or even uh, not getting involved um, is this, you know, depression, anxiety. Um, and listen, there's, there's help for that. I can give you, this is, this is a quick answer to a very complicated problem, so I'm not trying to make light of this for anybody. But Isaiah 40, 29 says, He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fail or fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. And it's not talking about just sitting back waiting for God to do something. It's, it's putting all of our, our, our weight, our yoking up with him and, and, and waiting for him to do a work in us um, as we're concentrating, living for him, reading for, about him, those kind of things. Um, and there's many other verses that will help you with that if you struggle with anxiety or even depression. Another reason people don't get involved like they should is they just don't have no vision. In other words, they, um, and, and no vision is not necessarily, you know, that the fact that you don't have that leadership quality that, that endears vision. I'm not talking about that. Some people don't have vision because they're, you know, um, they're, they're nearsighted, or, or you might say it this way, they're self-sighted. It's hard to see anything else when you're just looking at self. And some, pe- some people are so wrapped up in their own life, and I'm, they might not even be prideful or arrogant. It's just everything's about them. It, you know, if you're, having a, if, if some, you're having a bad day, my day is worse. You know, if you've got this, I've got some. It's always about them, so it's hard to see anything else. Uh, when all you're doing is looking at yourself. So sometimes that's the problem is, is a short-sightedness or, a, or self-sightedness, I guess I can say it that way. And then there's also the people that, that have this attitude, uh, you know, um, I, I've done that. I've been there, I've done that, you know. Um, it's, this, it's that spiritual kind of been there, done that attitude. You know, I, I supported a missionary once. I, I went on a mission trip once. I, I helped build a church 20 years ago. I, I won a soul to Christ five years ago. Uh, no, I mean, praise the Lord for all that stuff. But we're not supposed to live in the past, amen? That's, that's not what we do. I mean, we, we forget those things that are behind and we, and we press forward, amen? The, the Bible calls the life of a Christian one that is supposed to be striving for the mastery. So we don't get to, I don't care how old you are here tonight, and I'm not picking on you. I don't know who the oldest person is here, and I'm not going to point them out because I'll get in trouble. But, I mean, whoever you are, it doesn't matter who it is, whether you're you know, the oldest person here or, or you're in your 90s or your 100s. Listen, if, if you're 100 and you're still in this world, that means you've got a purpose. Amen? Our God would take you home. In His grace, He would do that. But that means there's something for you to do. So there's some striving still left in you. And I, and I love that. I love that. Um, um, I, I, it might be in Deuteronomy. It might be in Joshua. Um, where it talks about, no, it must be in Joshua, where Caleb, um, very old at this time, says, I want that mountain. Now, I, I love that. I, I hope that's my attitude when I'm, when I'm that age. Well, that's what we're supposed to do. Uh, James Garfield, young people, have you heard of James Garfield? Older folks, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to put you on the spot, and I won't put anyone on the spot, actually. But uh, James Garfield was our 20th president. Uh, he taught for a while at, at Hiram College in Ohio. Um, he was uh, ambidextrous. 
which means he could write or work with both hands. Do is just, you know, you know. Um, anyway, he used to write on the board um, with both hands at the same time. But here's what's really crazy. With one hand, uh, he'd be writing in, in Latin, and the other hand, he'd be writing in Greek. Now, that is just a smart guy, <laughs> you know. Um, anyway, but at one time, I, I, you know, he, and he pushed for a very strong program in academics. And one time, a, a father came to him and complained about, about how, how hard the schooling was, how hard the course was, how long it was, and all those kind of things. And he said, you know, can it, can it be easier? Can it be shortened? And, and Garfield said, certainly, I can do that, but it all depends on what you want me to make of your boy. In other words, what effort are you going to put into it? it some people have said, uh, it's one said that, uh, you know, when God wants to make an oak tree, it takes 100 years. When he wants to make a squash, it takes about two months. So uh, a big difference there as far as which one's going to be stronger. The other one, I'd probably rather eat, you know, an oak tree than a squash. But anyway, that's, I'm not going to go there. But um, what are we building for the Lord? What are we, what are we doing? What are we investing in? Um, I mean, are we, are we laboring? If it's worth doing, it will require some work. You know the verse, Ecclesiastes 9.10, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it how? Do it with all thy might. Um, so what are we physically doing with all of our might on any kind of regular basis? I mentioned the church. And there, I could, you could put down a hundred things here that you might come up with, some things that we could be investing in. Uh, Haggai 1.4 says, uh, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but ye have not enough. You drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put in a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord God, the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Someone investing into the house of God. And listen, how do you do that? A bus route, you know, uh, by, 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 by building uh, are, are, are keeping things um, in good running condition, even here, you know, in God's house. Cleanliness, uh, even inside the house. Edifying people, that's building up. Organizing events so we can reach people with them. Teaching Sunday school, soul winning, all of those kind of things is building up and taking care of God's house. Um, and I love this over in Exodus chapter 35 and verse 25. And it says, and all, the, and all the women that were wise-hearted did spin with their hands and brought that which they had spun, both of blue and of purple and of scarlet and of fine linen. Now, there were women that purposely were making these, these crafts, these tapestries, if you will, for the purpose of the tabernacle. That's why they were doing it. They were, they were spending their time at home or wherever it is, uh, creating things for the house of God, building. Okay, and, and we mentioned earlier Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. We'll go over a couple of verses there, and I'll be just about done. But I love the attitude of this woman. Proverbs 31. And look down in verse uh, 13. Now watch, watch what it says here and why it's saying these things. Proverbs 31, 13. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. Verse 16, skip down there. She considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands she planted a vineyard. Skip down to verse 19. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. Now, why? Why does she do this? Verse 20. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She had purpose in these things that she was doing. She was working so she could do something for God's glory with it. Yes, we ought to work, we ought to pay our bills, and we ought to take care of our family, all those kind of things. But is there any extra labors that we're doing? Is there work that's, that's taking place with our hands, physical work that are, are some physical, uh, has some physical outcome that we're doing strictly for God's glory? Not to, not to sustain ourselves, not to live, not for our substance, but for God's glory. What am I doing physically? To do something. Prayer is wonderful. And listen, you ought to pray every day and don't stop praying. God uses prayer in a wonderful way, but are you doing something with this body God's given us for his glory? Don't put off God's work. I mentioned the first half of Ecclesiastes 9, 10 earlier. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do with thy might. Because he says this, For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. In other words, do it while you can. Because there's going to be a day coming when you cannot no longer do it. And we're going to stand in front of him. And I, and I promise you, every one of us are going to wish we had done more. 
I promise you, I, he's not going to beat us up over that. He's a, he's a loving, wonderful, gracious, heavenly father. But I guarantee you, when we look in his eyes, we're going to wish we had done more for him. I mean, in every way that we could have. So let's use that the best that we can. Here's the question. If you left this planet tomorrow, okay, if you leave this planet tonight, is there something physically here that will have your stamp on it? I mean, it's for God's glory. In other words, you didn't do it in your own strength, but is there something physically here? Are there people here that, that, that have had, that God has used you to, to win to Christ or disciple them? Is there some event that's going to be going on? Is there some building? Is there some missionary? Is there some work? Is there something that has got the, your stamp that God's allowed you to put on something, some place that you've contributed to, and not just in the past, a fruit Listen, a, a tree is supposed to produce fruit every year, amen? And we ought to be producing something for God to the best of our ability, but, we, you know, with His glory, with His grace, I mean, um, we ought to be producing something uh, for His glory. So, questions or thoughts tonight? I know I've gone past seven minutes, so I apologize for that, but any questions or thoughts tonight before we close out here? Not yet, no, sir. We'll do, we, we can do that, though. No, I, I, you know, I know I had it written down here. I forgot all about that. So I'll come to that in just a second. Is there anything else as far as the message tonight, the lesson tonight? No? All right, so what's it next week? Fruit of the doings. Okay, fruit of our doings. Okay, we'll take a look at that. I'll ask you about some verses. Okay, and then just close out tonight with some praises. I don't want to take a lot of time from, from you folks, but I'll, well, I'll stay here all night long. I'm okay, so who's got a praise? Come on, man. <laughs> Killing me. <laughs> okay, man. That was Gabby and Josh. Okay, Josh. I didn't get a chance to meet Josh, but okay, amen. All right. Somebody else? A praise? Praise, praise the Lord, yes. And again, if you'd have seen my wife, it, it, it increased my prayer life right there. I'm not kidding either. <laughs> Okay. Oh, amen. Good, good, good. Praise the Lord. Amen. That is a praise. Yeah. Any other praises you want to share tonight? We want to praise the church. I'm, I'm praising the Lord for that as well. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, we're not un unpacking, though, dear. <laughs> You're done packing, though. Amen. Amen. <laughs> hey, those boxes never ended. My word. You pack one up. I'm like, where? How did that? We don't even own that picture. How's it get on the wall? I mean, I was just like, like Scooby-Doo. Something to disappear and come back again. I don't know, but anyone else tonight? All right. Brother John, why don't you close down a word of prayer? Hey, listen, bring someone with you on Sunday.